I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven for a man to eat and never die. I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give you is my flesh for the light of the world. Now for the last uh, year, uh, the major themes that I've been talking to you about and made the major uh, scripture uh, references have been to um, uh, the idea that Jesus is the branch and we we are the branch and he is the, uh, uh, the vine and the branches. And where Jesus says, without me you can do nothing. And uh, uh, we certainly know from um, uh, our own experience and uh, beginning with the fathers of the church and especially St. Augustine who says that we can neither will, desire, or do anything good without divine grace. So as that as a, you might say, a fundamental reality, we can do nothing without him. Uh, we can neither will, desire, or do anything good uh, without him. Uh, I would like to go from there to this book that I have given you, The, 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 the uh, Roots of Christian Mysticism by Clement. Um, when you uh, look at the, open that book, the first uh, uh, major concept that he is giving you is man's search for meaning in life. Uh, and he, we know that the life of Jesus is this meaning in life. Uh, Jesus and his whole mystery of his coming into this world, being planned from the very beginning, uh, before all the ages, before the creation of this world, and that you and I uh, came into this world to receive his revelation. And for him to be able to uh, bring us into existence and then to come into us, to be present within us, to continue uh, the incarnation. Um, that, that, that uh, we exist because he exists in us. Now, I just quoted this uh, passage from St. John, uh, from the sixth chapter, uh, where he says that he's the bread of life. Because we take this bread of life, uh, there is no stronger image of him living within us because we take this bread of life. By going to communion, and we're doing it all the time, uh, going to communion, uh, that's an extremely, extremely uh, meaningful act. To go to communion, we are given the body and blood of Jesus. Now, it is not us who consumes him. He consumes us. And he transforms us into himself. The, 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 the bread has become the uh, soul and divinity, uh, the humanity uh, of, of, of Jesus. And we have swallowed that reality. And he has devoured us in our swallowing so that we are being transformed into him. It is no insignificant act. Every single time 
we go to communion, Jesus is renewing the reality that he is there to begin with and that he is there to uh, consume that Eucharist, which makes his presence all the more uh, powerful, the more transformative. So we are being transformed into him. You might say it without knowing a thing. This is happening to us. Uh, now, can we know that this is happening? Yes. To know that this is happening is mysticism. So the very roots of mysticism is in the reality that Jesus is within us. Now, we take that reality into us in the sacramental form of his passion. St. Uh, Thomas Aquinas says that the Eucharist is always the, the symbol of the passion of Christ because of the double consecration of the wine, the bread and the wine, symbolizing the separation of the two, that Jesus has shed his blood. The blood is, 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 is gone out of the body and he has shed his blood for us. And so the, 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 the sacramental signification is his passion. So at the very basis, the very, very, very bottom of this sacramental receiving and the signification of it, of the passion, means in some way the whole life of Jesus <coughs> is taking place in us, Jesus in us. in his whole Passion Paschal Mystery. So that it's part of this passion that the mystical life has a true meaning in our lives because you and I do know suffering. All of us. All of us, in some way, uh, have uh, suffering. If it not uh, dramatically in your life, you certainly know people who do have suffering in their lives. We do know that the, you might say, the passion of Christ continues in this world. There is an enormous amount of suffering in the world today. When we uh, you just have to look at the newspapers and, 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 uh, and it, it's, it's, it is there. And this is happening to people. This is happening to us, our families, uh, uh, in many, many ways. Suffering is an element of our lives. The passion is as real in our lives as it was in the life of Jesus. Jesus knew from the beginning the suffering of humanity. In fact, he knew it in, in, in such a way that when he uh, uh, was about to take on his, uh, his passion uh, materially in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, he just sweat blood. It was so huge, uh, uh, the, 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 his, his awareness of the suffering of humanity was so huge that it, it, it just, he just fell to the ground and the weight of it all uh, just uh, made him prostrate there on the ground. Suffering is real so that we all take part in this uh, suffering this passion of Jesus, 
and that is part of the mystical life. We don't think of it as a mystical life, uh, but it is. Passion, the suffering of humanity, is real, and it certainly uh, uh, is in the, the, the lives of, 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 of people that we know in our own life, and, and as I say, it's, 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 it's there. But also, the transforming effect uh, of all this suffering in our lives. Um, when that suffering and that pain and that uh, uh, reality hits us and transforms us uh, gradually uh, uh, over years and years and years, um, there is a transformation. And you can certainly see this in uh, old married couples. It's a joy to uh, look in the newspaper and see the golden anniversary of our parents or our friends and relatives. When they celebrate their golden jubilee, they have a big, big affair and they put their picture in the newspaper. It's amazing how often that picture has been so transformed from the time that they were married, 50 years later, they begin to look like one another. <laughs> it's, I hear it from so many people. Gosh, you're looking more and more like each other. Uh, the, 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 the transformation of all the years of, of, of trial and the years of suffering, the years that they have gone through the passion of Christ. Completely unaware of it, they don't know that this is what they're going through. They don't, uh, and I, but, you know, sometimes they do. And, uh, uh, you know, some of these old ladies, they really, 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 really come to a tremendous degree of wisdom. And uh, uh, through this, uh, through, through years and years of, of, of suffering, and years and years of uh, uh, patience, virtue, um, goodness, and they, 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 they see how um, they're able to give and share this wisdom that they have now with their children, uh, with their uh, grandchildren, and uh, even sometimes maybe their husbands will even listen to them. <laughs> but it's very true. It, 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 these ladies have wisdom. And it's because they've gone through these years, they, 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 they would, if you ever told them that that whole life that you've been going through is the mystical life of Christ, they would say, Father, what are you talking about? I'm just, a, you know, I'm just a, a housewife. I don't know anything about this stuff. But that's what they've been through. And now they've come to this, you might say, the resurrection. And they've come to this, this mellowness. And uh, uh, th th they're asked by their children and their grandchildren, uh, Grandma, uh, I've got this problem. Uh, what should I do? Well, Grandma can come up with some real, 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 real wisdom. Uh, they've been through it all. They've seen it all. And they know the big things of, of life. And they it's not like when they were bringing up their own children, they were worried every minute that their children were going to do the wrong thing and that they were doing the wrong thing and they were always worried. But now they've been through all of that and they can look back at, at their grandchildren and realize that, you know, that, that little stuff doesn't matter. It's the big stuff that, um, uh, that, that, that it's all right. And um, I think I told you about the, you know, the, 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 the parents can be all upset and worried about the children and embarrassed by what they do. And the grandparents just sit back and with their unconditional love uh, for these children, 
they just they can do no wrong, and they just laugh at uh, the, the the things that the kids do. I, I think I told you about this little kid, this high. He's going to be a ring bearer in a family wedding, so he's got his little tuxedo, and he's all excited. Uh, and he goes up to the to the wedding. Everything's fine. Then they come to the reception, and he's at the head table because he's part of the the, the uh, wedding party. He's up there, and he eats his supper. Then after he finishes eating, he goes down to each table and uh, said, tells the people, if you've got any extra meat, send it up to the head table. <laughs> well, the father was embarrassed to Dickens. He was so embarrassed by the little kid. But the grandpa laughed. He thought it was the funniest thing he ever heard. So, you know, that's, that's the way grandparents look at the the, the issues of life. They laugh, at the, it, but they have this unconditional love for these children, and they laugh because whether they know it or not, they've gone through all these years, and now they're at this um, period of, uh, of wisdom. And that is, you might say, one aspect of the mystical life. By the way, the, 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 the uh, authoress who, who sort of understood this very well was Carol Hauslander. She talked about the, the, the passion of Christ in, 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 in all of us. Uh, we go through the, uh, our, our life story is the passion of Christ because he is within us. We are living it not knowing that we're living in, but there are uh, moments that we can know. And I think that um, uh, the whole movement, the whole interest in uh, spirituality, in um, contemplation, in mysticism, uh, is because we have an intuition that maybe I can know Maybe I can experience uh, this reality of Jesus within me, of Jesus uh, living within me, of Jesus uh, moving me, uh, of Jesus being there. And um, uh, this isn't unreasonable if we are consuming and being consumed by the Eucharist week after week or day after day, uh, something has to happen. Uh, something has happened to us. And um, uh, so we want to find meaning in life, and there's the roots of the meaning uh, in life. The roots that the life of Christ is being relived in because uh, Jesus is living in me. And he came to reveal the goodness and love of God. And the, the greatest revelation takes place uh, in his redemption. The revelation of the uh, absolute, infinite uh, mercy of God. That he, um, uh, that, that this infinite love is willing to uh, place a mirror before humanity and let them see their suffering. When we see that crucifix, we are looking at suffering to the, uh, you might say, universal degree. The suffering of humanity is on that cross. Jesus knew every single pain in the world from all time. He is God. He cannot learn anything. So he knows it. He knows the suffering. And he chose this to 
show us the suffering of humanity and the extent that he is willing to go to redeem our suffering. He is willing to take it all upon himself and, uh, and, and, and go down into that tomb. Now down in that tomb, we know that uh, uh, Adrian von Speyer uh, inspired uh, van Balthasar to theologize about Jesus' descent into that tomb and the mystery of Holy Saturday. Uh, I cannot tell you the, 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 the chord that that plays. You might say the chord of Jesus in the tomb on Holy Saturday. Uh, the whole monastery um, experiences, it's as if this Shekinah, the cloud of unknowing, comes down uh, upon the, 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 the monastery because of the emptiness of God. The church is empty. The tabernacle is open wide. Uh, we're naked. The altar is unstripped. Uh, rather, it's stripped. The, 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 the whole place is empty without God. And that emptiness is a real presence it's an experience, and the whole monastery feels it. It's, it's the, the same as what happens uh, when there is a death in the community. Uh, when there is this, this reality of, of um, uh, the sorrow comes upon us, and we all experience it. And um, uh, that's what Holy Saturday means. Something happened on Holy Saturday. And Van Balthasar and Van Adrian, they, 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 they saw this, or certainly Adrian saw it uh, in vision. And uh, Van Balthasar saw it in theology. And um, Pope Benedict XVI, uh, who was a great friend of Van Balthasar, um, uh, wrote about it in his encyclical on... Um, And there he describes Jesus descending into hell, that he brought light and life into hell. Brought light, life, and love into hell. And if hell is consumed with light and love, and uh, there's not much left of hell. He doesn't, he doesn't say that. But he says that Jesus came down there and brought uh, light and love. And from there, Jesus rose. So that this is a very, very, very real part of the uh, Paschal mystery, of the, 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 the passion narrative uh, that descended to hell and Jesus rising from uh, the hell and bringing all of us with him. That is our redemption. Now, all of that can be historical or uh, theological or mystical, uh, visionary uh, realities, uh, events, or it can also be our experience. We can experience uh, uh, the, the, the redemption coming into our darkness our, uh, you might say, our hell. Uh, and some people, when they tell you they're suffering, it certainly is a hell. Um, and that, 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 that the reality of that light and that love uh, came into that uh, hell and can bring the person from there to uh, resurrection and to uh, salvation. Um, yeah, uh, 
Clemens, in his first chapter in his book on the roots of Christian mysticism, he talks about uh, the whole reality of Christianity is there in the passion. Uh, the whole reality is there. And uh, the rest of the book will be about the experience of that reality. Uh, Jesus was here for 30 years, and from birth to death is the life of Jesus that is in us. And that whole, um, uh, the, 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 all the events of that life are real, and in some ways, uh, each one of us take part of that reality. And you might say different notes of that reality are in each one of our lives. Uh, nobody is the same as anybody else. It's all individual. And the individual experience, the re individual religious experience is different. But certainly there is enough um, uh, commonality that we can talk about a, a uh, mystical experience because there are enough people that say yes uh, that means something to me yes I do know what they're talking about uh, when Thomas Merton talks about in his um, uh, the, the book on, on understanding the gift of understanding uh, he talks uh, he, about his first experiences of mystical uh, experience. Uh, he talks about this, this, this experiencing something that was new, but yet somehow familiar. And uh, he just burned uh, with love. And so uh, it, it's there in our um, tradition, it's there in the Cistercian tradition, and um, uh, as Clemens says uh, in his introduction, that people are heading toward the East, they're, uh, they're, they're searching for religious experience in, 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 in Zen and in Eastern religion uh, because they have not found it in Christianity. Uh, but it's there, and it certainly has been uh, clouded, you might say, uh, for over the last few um, centuries uh, because of fear, uh, because of the French Revolution, uh, because of these historical events, the, the fear of, of any kind of delusion or anything in the and the, 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 some of the heresies that uh, Madame Guillon and the Quietists, who believed that because they uh, felt that they were uh, mystics, that they were free from any kind of moral uh, restraints. They could do whatever they want because they were mystics. Well, uh, that's why it's good to be in a monastery when you find out that you're a mystic. <laughs> Somebody is sure to tell you, you still got to behave yourself. <laughs> yeah, uh, Madame Guillon, um, the, the quietists, made some errors, but they also had some truths there. And uh, because of their errors, uh, especially the French um, uh, Trappists, uh, they, they were frightened to death of uh, contemplation. And it was only through Thomas Merton and through Thomas Keating and uh, through um, Flavian Burns uh, that the word contemplation got into our uh, statutes and the, 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 uh, the new, uh, um, uh, our new uh, law. So you're all part of that, that swing, you might say, from uh, doing reparation uh, for the French Revolution 
to, you might say, enjoying the beauty of the early Cistercian Fathers and um, knowing that the Cistercian Fathers were just going back to the early Fathers of the Church, which brings us to Clement's book on the roots of Christian mysticism. It's there in the Fathers. And um, uh, so I hope you enjoy this, 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 this book. Maybe later on we can talk about it. I would like to get your reactions uh, to the book. Um, but we, uh, it's everybody that I spoke with uh, recommends it highly. So I guess that's about all I have to say uh, this, this afternoon.